All right, it looks like we're live. For now, the connection looks good. Here we go. Let's start with a video. So, and I see my microphone is a little bit hot here, but let's switch over to this view. Hey everyone, welcome. <laughs> uh, we're doing another live stream just uh, yeah, to have some fun and talk. And uh, there's already like a lot going on in the chat room. I'm going to check on that in a sec. I need to 
figure out why the uh, audio is a little bit hot here. Oh, well, I think it's okay. Just the um, the noise gate there. I think I want that a little bit higher. So is that still working? Good. Okay. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Where's my chat window? Um, who do we have here? Ember Moon. Hi there. Uh, Oli, welcome back. Abraxas. Uh, yeah. 1990, that was the time, huh? <laughs> yeah, now, now I'm uh, working from a motorhome. But hopefully not for too long or for too much longer because um, my wife and I were, were actually planning to build a house and we're in the process of it and things are moving but uh, they're moving slowly it will uh, probably still take a year or so that's what i'm thinking right now uh, hi patty hi stefan and uh, yeah uh, germany i'm coming i'm actually gonna go to uh, gamescom and also in october there's the uh, amiga 37 uh, they're holding it now in manchen gladbach and I should be there. And uh, also, I will actually, it looks like I'm going to be a week after Amiga 37. There's an event in Norway, uh, Bergen, Bergen, Norway, uh, which is the back in time live. Uh, finally, after uh, two years pandemic, they're going to get to it again. And I'm invited there too. I'm trying right now to figure out the flights and everything, so but it looks like I'm gonna be there. Um, yeah, what else is going on? I have uh, allergies today. The, the 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 wind that's going on stirring up all kinds of dust and uh, and thing. But I took uh, medication, so hopefully hopefully I won't have too much problems. But uh, my eyes are watering and stuff. But uh, let's lif listen to some more music. Um, let's see what we have on deck. Maybe we'll do another video for now and then we'll go on. And this, this is all music from the Patreon project. So anybody who is not part of that yet, I really encourage you to uh, check it out. I'll show you the website. Um, this is it, Patreon, Chris Hulsbeck, and you find it there, and there's a lot of stuff. Wait, I have to switch over to this view. There it is. So there's the page, my Patreon. All the music you're going to hear today is from the Patreon project. And I'll leave that up here, and let's see what other video we might play. Let's go back here and see. Oh yeah, this one is fun. This was like, uh, yeah, six, seven, eight months ago. I did this uh, piece that. Uh, oh, and now the cat is coming. Of course. Hi, Lily. You want to be on the? You want to be on the chat? No. <laughs> Here's Lily. She's not very excited when I pick her up. Okay. So let's play that for a little bit, and then I'll be back.
Yeah. Thanks, Patty. Um, that is, uh, that was uh, Dolby Chrome Nostalgia, <laughs> which uh, was a lot of fun to put together. As I mentioned in the chat, uh, I, uh, this was a challenge that I put on myself uh, for just using one plugin, which is the Arturia SQ80, a virtual recreation of the Ensonic uh, ESQ1 and uh, SQ80, which was the, my first real hardware synth that I owned in the early days of Rainbow Arts. And um, yeah, it's really cool that they uh, recreated that. And it's a fantastic plugin and uh, has so much uh, uh, possibilities over the hardware. I mean, the hardware is great, but the plugin you can open several times, times and I think I used like 17 or 18 instances of the plugin in this track and uh, a bunch of effects then, but no other plugin. So that was super fun to do. Uh, okay, let's see what else is in the chat room here. TS, yeah, 92, you were in Langen with, uh, when, when we had Kaiko up and running and we were doing Apedia. Um, there's something going on, by the way, <laughs> that I can't talk about yet, but uh, suffice to say, um, I'm still uh, very much friends with my old colleagues there and we have something cool planned for later this year. So, um, yeah, that's, that's been, uh, it's unbelievable. That's 30 years, um, ago <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so much time has passed, but, uh, I'm still drawn to the eighties as you can tell with that track. So let's see what else we have. Uh, I think I'm going to really play a whole bunch of videos today. And then I actually have a, have a little surprise because uh, for this month I have another, had another challenge that I, that, uh, yeah, something that happened. I'm talking about it after this. So what are we going to play now? Yeah, here's a cool one. I did with the um, Arturia Microfreak, which is uh, a hardware synth. I have it actually, let me see if I can show that. Big. Let me grab that. Uh, it's actually right here. This is uh, my first hardware synth in, I don't know, 20 years or something. <laughs> since I went virtual with all the plugins and everything and I'm having a lot of fun with that thing and I made a whole track with that except for the drums so I'll play that now and let's go there enjoy Thank you. 
Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> where do I start? I see some uh, things in the chat room. This this one was insane. I mean, um, coming from uh, almost 20 years of working with plugins and um, having that convenience, you know, of uh, it just you know, open another one, open another one if you if you need more. You you're basically only limited by your computer uh, how how fast the CPU is, but you can do a lot more than what I was able to do in even like the mid '90s, where I had like a big hardware studio with all kinds of synths. But you always have only one of each, and if you want another sound from the same machine, then uh, you you're you're out of luck. Um, or you have to like uh, uh, track it and record the audio and then do another one. So with this, with the um, micro freak there from Aturia, it's the same problem. I mean, you you want to have a bass, you want to have a melody, you want to have chords, and that's already like uh, three or four or more um, recordings you need to do over and over, and then edit the whole thing at least like it's still fairly easy to uh, copy and paste and do all that stuff in in the uh, in my music software which is Steinberg Cubase by the way but still um, it it is tedious work but it was fun and uh, the the little micro freak definitely has a lot of character and what I like about it is that you can um, easily create patches by just twiddling all the knobs and that's a big, you know, thing for hardware. I mean, for software, there are like some workarounds where you can have like fader boxes and things like that. But it's always a hassle to set those up. And then uh, when you move on to another plugin, it doesn't work right with the settings. And so I, I never really got into that uh, part with fader boxes and things like that um, but having having you know now a hardware synth again it's so much fun to really like dial in the sound and then and then even even while you're playing it you can like um, easily access all the parameters and the filters and everything so what i'm actually hoping for and i'm already like uh, sending arturia messages constantly that they would create a plugin version of the micro freak um, which would then have, you would have the best of both worlds. You have the hardware in front of you and you can control the plugin with the same uh, knobs and parameters and then also open the plugin several times and uh, use it that way, just like with other soft sense. So, yeah, so that would be, uh, that would be the I ideal scenario and I hope they do it someday. They certainly have the expertise, as they proved in the past, that they can recreate almost any hardware synth, so why not one of their own? Um, I really don't think they would uh, um, have any negativity from that. <laughs> I mean, people who love the hardware will, will keep it, and people who love software will get that, and I would even have both. You know, I would like to have the hardware and software side by side and have them work together. Anyway, so um, let me see what other questions were here. Uh, by the way, there's my my friend from England here, uh, Dave Meredith. He is actually a very prolific um, composer of his own. He has a lot of uh, uh, albums on Bandcamp, and I always enjoy when he puts something new out, so you should check him out. Dave Meredith, shout out. <laughs> and uh, then what was another question? Uh, how do you? How long do you take for mixing and mastering the tracks? Um, thanks. Yeah, the, uh, thanks for that compliment on the sound. I actually uh, often do it um, side by side while I'm doing the composition. I also work on my master chain, and by now I, I just have after 35 years of doing it, I've just so much experience that I uh, can click together really quick the the plugins that I know work and the EQ settings and everything. And then it's really just about the balance of the different elements. And I just do it while I'm composing. So by the time, um, you know, it goes to mastering, it's really only 
minor things that I have to do. So it doesn't really take me that long, to be honest. Um, in fact, uh, here, maybe we should move on to uh, my little preview for this month, because uh, this is a little bit on a, on a sad note, but uh, also a celebration of uh, uh, Vangelis' life, because uh, Vangelis passed away uh, this month, and um, it's, uh, he, he was definitely one of my idols from my youth, uh, when I started um, becoming interested in synthesizers. Um, I listened to a lot of people, you know, like Kraftwerk and Tangerine Dream and Jean-Michel Jarre and of course Van, Van Gellis. He was uh, definitely uh, uh, in the top three of my favorites. And um, I mean, um, you know, there's just so many things that he did uh, from Chariots of fire and all those uh, movie soundtracks with sons in the in the early to mid 80s um uh, the blade runner is amazing and uh, uh lots of other ones and then also his albums there's also a lot of cool stuff there and so i thought like it would be fitting for this month and <laughs> <laughs> this is actually very fitting. Lily uh, just touched the keyboard, and there's my, there's one of my uh, or one of the best known sounds from uh, Vangelis right there. It's the uh, it's that lead sound that he used for Chariots of Fire and um, and some of the other ones. And Lily is like a little bit miffed. Come on, go on, go on, go on. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't want me to. She doesn't want me to play with the keyboard. That's funny. Anyway, so uh, let's go here over to Cubase. There it is. And um, yeah, so she was actually touching the keyboard here. So there, here we have one of those sounds, those iconic synth sounds. And this is actually a uh, plugin. Uh, also from Arturia, recreation of the uh, CS80V, which was one of um, which was one of Angelus's favorite synths, and so I figured, yeah, like right. I mean, that is like the iconic sound right there, and so I thought I'm gonna do like a tribute uh, composition for this month's Patreon. And uh, I'll play that now and show you the different parts here. And we start out with an arpeggio there. And then there's uh, some drums from XO and uh, RMX. And then I also have uh, some other plugins, the giant piano there that sounded good. And then uh, the, the orchestra, which is a um, sound library on a uh, contact uh, and so let's play that now so this is this is uh, I sent the uh, early preview to my patrons who are on the preview level yesterday uh, but this is basically like the, the world premiere of this part and it's not finished yet of course uh, for for all of you to enjoy so here it is. Oh, I should actually start at the beginning. That would probably help. There you go.
Yeah, so <laughs> there it is. That's what I have so far. I still need to finish it, of course, in the next few days. And then it's going to be the upload for this month. And uh, yeah, thanks. So actually, uh, um, you said like there are uh, mixed orchestration and synths, and that was exactly what I was going for there. Um, yeah, uh, Schallplatt, vinyl. Yes, that is, of course, a, um, a thing that uh, nobody expected to come back, but it, uh, and here's Lily again. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm doing a live stream here. You can't be in the, you can't be in everything here. <laughs> that cat, I swear. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, vinyl is definitely uh, a surprise that it came back. We've done a few vinyls there also for the for the last two Kickstarters. Um, or actually for all of them we had like vinyl, even for the Tarik and Soundtrack Anthology we had a maxi as um, maxi single and then Piano Collection had vinyl and then the two orchestral Tarik projects uh, had it as well and it's pretty insane what's going on there. Um, now they're talking about, I heard rumors that it will take a year and a year and a half to actually produce vinyl so um, I don't know what I should think about that, but the problem is that the uh, uh, the manufacturers of vinyl, they cannot um, get new machines to up the production capacity. They just ha they have to work with the old machines and they're starting to fall apart and they're repairing them, but uh, there's there's no nobody who builds like a new press pressing vinyl pressing system. So, um, yeah, it's tough, and then uh, the, the the world ex is experiencing like a shortage of uh, source materials that probably plays in with it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> bad cat, <laughs> exactly. So she's calmed down now. Hopefully, she won't uh, stomp around on my keyboard anymore. Uh, okay, uh, another question here was. Um, yeah, the uh, the samples on the C64. I was one of the first. That's true. Uh, I don't think I was the actual first one, but um, uh, I remember like that first year of uh, Rainbow Arts. I had a program called Digi Drums, and uh, I was really fascinated by it. Uh, there were four bit samples that they were playing, uh, recorded samples, and it was just like a drum machine type of uh, software and uh, I figured out that they're doing it somehow without the uh, SID voices and that you could actually turn them on. I, so I had that drum plugin and I, I turned on some, some SID channels and had them play some uh, uh, sawtooth wave or something and then I started the drum plugin and it played over it and that gave me the idea, oh, the way they're doing it, it must be possible to combine that and then I uh, worked with my friend Peter Tirov on a sampler uh, hardware uh, that we could attach to the Commodore 64, which, by the way, <laughs> I don't know if this is interesting, but I think we killed uh, two or three C64 in the process of building that hardware. We had to actually um, remove chips and replace them to uh, get them working again, but we got it done. And then... Um, uh, yeah, so I, s I made the software to record the samples from that uh, from that eight bit sampler uh, that we built, and I ran it down to four bits. Um, and I had this whole technology ready in the summer of 1987. And uh, Rainbow Arts was working on several games, and I think the first one was either Bad Cat or Jinx. And the game was just not ready. I had the music in there in the summer. And then, like, in August or September, um, Martin Galway came out with Arcanoid, which had a similar kind of uh, system, uh, though it was a little bit uh, less flexible than mine. It could only play, like, uh, very short generated samples of, like, 
256 bytes or something and either like played them one shot or looped and that that uh, he made like sounds in there that sounded a little bit like drums and that was the Arcanoid t title melody and I was a little bit shocked that somebody beat me to uh, put out another voice even though I had the technology ready for a while but that's that's how things go uh, but I was actually playing much longer samples I think for for Bad Cat and Jinx and some of the other ones title musics that I did uh, the memory was full with samples so and this was also why later we had to actually get rid of it um, because the games were just getting too big and there was not enough room for it uh, but anyway yeah so that was a fun flashback um, yeah uh, okay back to patreon and uh, some other tunes I think I'll play one that I actually did fairly early in the process. Let me see if I can find it. Um, this was also something that was inspired by Vangelis. So, uh, where is my folder? Here. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, where is it? Visions of Tyrell, there it is. And by the way, if you want to see this folder of uh, of pieces that I did for the Patreon, so here it starts. And um, as you can see, there's even like more because in some of the compilation albums that I did, there's this um, Seven Days, Seven Songs. So you can see that is already uh, seven more tracks here that I did for the for the Patreon, and uh, and as you can see, all these in this folder. This is if 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 you're not part of this Patreon project yet, if you sign up today, you get like access to all these um, music pieces in one fell swoop. So. Uh, here is Visions of Tyrell, which is uh, 2018, as you can see. So, um, in July 2018, I did that one. And that was also inspired by, uh, by Vangelis. So, let's listen to that now.
yeah, uh, even the title, as you can see, is inspired by Blade Runner, Visions of Tyrell, the Tyrell Corporation. Um, any case, yeah, actually, Winamp is back uh, for a while now. They, uh, they started up um, developing again. Um, yeah, so uh, somebody said here, um, you know, you're go getting into game development. Uh, one of the perks of my Patreon project is actually that um, also you can use all these music pieces for free. Um, they're all royalty free. If you become part of the uh, project and support me, um, and it starts at one dollar uh, a month, um, you can use all these music pieces for free in your YouTube video, in your game, and whatever. The only thing that I'm asking for is a credit, screen credit, or in the liner notes, or below the video, or whatever. Um, and if you like to link back to the Patreon, that's a bonus. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that is that is uh, one of the big perks of that, and this is also why I'm from time to time doing these. And uh, since the <laughs> the, um, the catalog is growing, I think we have like four seventy five uh, or so music pieces in there now. And um, okay, in fact, let's play something from the videos again. And uh, let's see what else we have. I think there was actually one right there. Um, a, f a year ago or so, I did a synthwave piece. Actually, two, I think, are already on there. And a bunch of other ones. So check also out my my YouTube channel and subscribe there. there. And um, uh, yeah, let's, let's watch that and listen to this. So this is like a synthwave.
Yeah. You go synth wave. <laughs> uh, and Jan Hammer, as, uh, as uh, you mentioned here, um, definitely also one of my idols. And um, yeah, what was another question? Uh, uh, about uh, remixes. So if it's, um, if, if anybody does remixes of my songs that are outside of the Patreon, so like from game, game music or something, uh, I have no issues if they are released non-commercial. So if you just want to put them on YouTube or, or, or in SoundCloud or wherever, um, and you're not earning money with it, then I have no problem with it. Um, if it's a commercial release, uh, you know, uh, contact me, uh, and then we'll find a solution for that. Uh, about the, all the pieces on Patreon, if you do remixes of those, um, they come with the same rights as the original piece. So you can use it royalty free. You can even earn money with it. Um, uh, you, the only thing you cannot do is you cannot like take, this is another rule. You cannot take, um, a bunch of the Patreon tracks and release an album with it. Um, uh, but you can definitely do a remix and add it to one of your albums. Or, as I said, you can use them in video games. Um, you can use them on YouTube, on SoundCloud, wherever. And uh, also I have some um, higher patron tiers where I even give you the uh, MIDI and Cubase data. So uh, if you're really into remixing, then uh, that's definitely a cool option for you. Uh, okay, and we're all actually, again, it's crazy how fast time goes by. Um, so I had actually planned an hour for this and we're almost there. And luckily this one actually so far uh, didn't have a lot of technical glitches. So I think I'll close this out, and um, but I'll keep chatting and answering your questions. And maybe we'll watch one more video. So let's see if we find something here on the channel. Uh, which one would be fun? Uh, generations, science fiction. Yeah, that might actually be a good one. Um, there are so many on there. Please check out this, this channel and uh, also watch those videos because I need more watch hours. I can still not monetize uh, YouTube because uh, I have enough subscribers, but I don't have enough watch hours. So uh, definitely check these out. Uh, this is another one from, uh, from Patreon, a uh, little bit more science fiction style. And also a word about the videos that I put together. So the imagery comes all from a service called Storyblocks. Um, I signed up with them a while ago. It's not, it's not cheap, but they have really amazing quality videos. And it's a similar thing. You, you pay like a monthly thing and you can use all of their uh, videos and uh, download them high quality and then uh, use them in your own. And then you're, you're good to go. Uh, so let's listen to Generations, which is actually an older piece also from the Patreon project, but I felt inspired to make a video for it. And thank you guys for watching. Um, I definitely plan to um, do this again. Uh, the last time is a, is a while ago, but uh, I also archive these so you can watch uh, back episodes. And uh, maybe we'll see you next month already again, because this was definitely fun. It's always fun when everything goes right. So thank you, everybody. And I'll close it out with Generations. Now, start it over from the beginning. Okay, bye, guys.